So welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the best recommended settings by YouTube for YouTube Shorts. One thing to keep in mind is that you do not always want to export your video in the highest quality possible because as soon as you upload it to YouTube, YouTube compresses that and sometimes you get a lower quality video because that compression just doesn't work or YouTube maybe was trying really hard to compress your video and it just made it worse. So YouTube has a whole page of recommended settings based on the frame rates you're shooting at, based on the video quality and the resolution that you're shooting at. So let's take a look at that first. Keep in mind that these are the recommended settings from YouTube for regular horizontal videos, but YouTube hasn't come up with recommended upload encoding settings yet for YouTube Shorts. So I'm guessing these encoding settings are still relevant even for YouTube Shorts. This is the video codec H.264, the frame rate, common frame rates. And the one thing I wanna focus on is over here, recommended video bit rates for SDR uploads. Most of the videos that I shoot or that I upload or that you may be uploading on YouTube Shorts most likely are going to be SDR videos because people aren't really going on YouTube Shorts to watch ADR videos, at least not yet. So we'll look at the top over here. So for YouTube Shorts, most of the time you want to upload in 1080p. So in a 9x16 file format, as opposed to the horizontal 16x9 file format, which would be 1920 times 1080, you just reverse that. So it'd be 1080p times 1920. For 1080p, YouTube's recommended settings, if you are exporting a video in 24, 25, or 30 frames per second is of eight megabits per second. And that obviously increases when you are exporting at a higher frame rate. But for YouTube Shorts, we just focus on this number right here. You can go ahead and read all over that, but for our purposes, this is what we need to know. So I have a vertical clip right here. So right click, new item, sequence. I have created my own custom sequence for 9x16 format already, but let me show you how you can do it from scratch. So I can go into digital DSLR, go to 1080p, 24, and over to settings, we can just reverse this, change the aspect ratio. So instead of 1920 by 1080, we're going to go 1080 by 1920. And that switches to 9 by 16. In order for you not to have to do this every single time, you can save this as a preset and just name it whatever you, you want. YouTube Shorts preset. For me, I have it named as a 9 by 16 preset. Once you're good, you can click OK with that and press OK. I have created mine right here off of a preset. You can see it right here in my program monitor. And another quick trick that you can do when you're editing vertical videos is to customize your layout for vertical videos. So I have one set up here already to vertical, but let me go back to my regular workspace. What you can do in this case, if you want to set up something that's optimized for vertical video editing, you can just go and drag this program monitor over here and drag it all the way to the right until you see this highlight part appear. Now here you can just drag and adjust that as you like. And once you're happy with that, you can go and save this workspace for vertical video editing. So you go back into window, workspaces, and you can save this as a new workspace. And that's it. So since I already had mine saved, let's go back to Mario Vertical. Let's drag this vertical clip over will keep existing settings. This is in a lock format, so I already have a preset for that. So I'm just gonna go to SLock3 to Mario YouTube. So that is a preset that I've made for all my YouTube videos. If you're interested, maybe I might put it up for sale sometime. And now to export, you can go into the file and export. You, or you can just press Control M or hold Control and press M on your keyboard. Right here, you can name your video. Under location, you can save it wherever you like. Under preset, there is no preset right now that we have set, but we'll come back to that in a bit. So format, we'll keep that H.264. Let's toggle the video thing open. And one thing you can quickly do, as you may notice right now, the video that you'll be, you'll be exporting is in a 16 by nine format. As you can see by these black bars, we don't want to get rid of that. So you can click on match source and that is going to match the export to the actual size of the video. So that's a quick way of getting rid of those black bars. And then we can click on more, but let's go over here first. So frame size, 
If you uncheck it, you can further go in and select that. But since we clicked on match source, that has been automatically done for us. Frame rate, we'll leave it at 23.976. Field order, progressive, and aspect, we'll leave it as at custom. And now under more, and now over here, we can make sure you check render at maximum depth. Use maximum render quality, time interpolation, we'll select frame sampling, hardware encoding. This is going to depend on your computer, but if your computer allows it, always select hardware encoding. It's going to be much faster. Under profile, I like to keep it at main. Under level, for myself, I usually like to keep it around the 4.2 4 mark, so we'll leave it at that. Export color space will be Rec 709. And from there, we'll go down to the bitrate settings. So here you select the target bitrate in megabits per second. Remember what YouTube said about a 1080p video? Well, they said that they recommend about eight megabits per second. So that is what we're going to do. Just go in and enter eight megabits per second. And that is going to be our target bitrate. So for audio, we can keep that at AAC, sample rate at 48,000 Hertz, channel stereo, and under bitrate settings, we can go back to the YouTube page to see what YouTube recommends. In this case for stereo, they recommend 384 kilobits per second. So we have it at 320. Now we can select 384. To be honest though, for audio, I usually really can't tell the difference as I'm not a sound engineer or something like that. So to me, as long as your audio is captured well, the audio on your exported video is going to sound good. So now that we have all of that set, we can go ahead and click on export. And also in order to save time for future exports, once you have this set up right now, before you click export actually, you can just go under preset up here, click on the three dots and say preset. And you can just name it YouTube Shorts and click OK. So next time you come back and export your video, all you need to do is just find that preset under your preset settings. And that way you save your time from having to go and select all of those settings again. So now you just export your video and that's it. So that's it for today's video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on YouTube Shorts. Do we enjoy them or do you not? So that's it for today's video and I'll see you next time.